I'm now joined by Supreme Knight Patrick Kelly to discuss the remarkable success of Mother Teresa, No Greater Love, among other things. Mr. Kelly, always great to see you. Thanks for taking the time to be on Nightcast. Hi, Jonathan. It's great again to be with you. So the movie's a smashing success, right? So we've got two days. It reached number two for some period of time there. It's so far over a million dollars come in on this. Why is it so successful? You know, um, the movie says a lot, and I think it touches a lot of people in so many ways. I mean, The Witness of Mother Teresa is one, I think, for every person, if you watch this film, it touches each of us in a different way. But I think, you know, in many ways, Mother Teresa, she lived her life by following the two commandments that Christ gave us, love of God and love of neighbor. And so I think there's a, there's a purity to her witness that really resonates with people. But I think it's a little more than that, too. I think people see that when you see Mother Teresa, I mean, it is her life. She had a radical life. It was a, a life of radical self-giving. But we all can do that, too, in a way, right? So we all are called to serve the poorest in our lives. But, but when I say poor, I mean, the poor come in many different disguises. And we all have people in our lives that need help in one way or another. And we can do those small acts of charity, doing small things with great love in the same way that Mother Teresa did. And we can do that. So I think that's one of the reasons why the film has been such a success. Well, let's hope the movie keeps getting out there, more people see it, and that it changes a bunch of lives, even if small steps, small incremental steps of service. So let me change the subject a little bit because it's been busy a couple weeks for the nights. We recently had our college council meeting where we bring leaders from all of the college councils. I think we had over 50 campuses represented, a couple hundred people there. Great event. It's over weekend. You've got awards you give away. You've got a time of fellowship, but you've also got a time of formation. So it's important what they hear and what they learn. You were at this event. Tell me, how did it go? What did you see at this the college conference is really one of my favorite events of the year, because as you say, we, we get so many college nights into New Haven, and they're here for a weekend of faith formation, of discussions, and they bring so much energy with them. I mean, these are, these are young men on college campuses, and they are on fire for their Catholic faith, and they are motivated by being a Knight of Columbus. It's so encouraging to be with them, you know, and it's not easy. It's not easy being a Knight of Columbus on campus. It's not easy being a Catholic on campus, but what I find from them is they're really energized about this. They're energized about their faith. And the whole college experience, I think, is one where the Knights of Columbus can make that college experience so much better by bringing young men together of like mind in a band of brothers and just really enhancing the college experience. I know that was the case for me because I, I was a college knight. I joined the Knights at Marquette University and the guys I joined with were my friends throughout college and many of them are still my friends. So it was a, it was a very inspiring and hopeful event. One of the, the highlights was, and we were there together at this, when we saw uh, our, our good friend of the Knights, uh, His Eminence Colonel Dolan, gave this talk on the Friday night, the keynote. Powerful talk on what it means to be a soldier for Christ. It seemed to resonate with the guys in the room. What, it, what did you think of his talk and, and what made it grab these guys? Well, you know, it was great because Cardinal Dolan was there. And as you know, as many people know, he is a great communicator. He's one of the great communicators in the Catholic Church today. And we were in, just to set the scene for everyone, we were in the basement of St. Mary's, where the Knights of Columbus were founded 140 years ago. So the setting was great. The setting was ideal for this Friday night dinner. And Cardinal Dolan gave a wonderful talk, as you say, about being a soldier for Christ. And he talked about what we need to do is we need to have courage, we need to have dedication, and we need to have unity, right? We need to stay together. And this is an interesting one. We need to know, we need to be clear about who our enemy is, right? So that's, that's mm -hmm. the case for all soldiers, all military men. But for us as Christians, these examples apply to us as well. I mean, there is, 
we as Christians, as Catholics, need courage. We need dedication. We need unity. And we need to know that there is a dark force out there, the enemy of our soul, trying to knock us off track. So, so that was the talk that he gave. And I really think the men there really appreciated it. Uh, it was a substantive talk. He, he was funny, the way Cardinal Dolan always is. But he really left the guys with a sense of mission. I was in the Navy, so I'm a military man myself. And the, the mission is paramount when you're in the military. But the point that Cardinal Dolan made was, as Christians, as Christian and Catholic men, we have a mission. And that mission is given to us by Jesus Christ. And we need to be dedicated to that mission. And we need to be disciplined. And we need to stay together. So all in all, I think it was just a great evening. And I think there was a great sense of brotherhood there. Uh, there's another issue that we really need to persevere in. And we've talked about this. This is a very important moment for the pro-life movement. Uh, Dobbs has been decided. Roe has been overturned. But that's by no means the end of the challenges we have ahead of us. We, we pray it's the beginning of an end, as you said, but it's not the end. We've got the March for Life coming up. What, are we, what do we need to be doing right now for the pro-life cause? I think what we need to be doing is we need to realize that what the Dobbs decision did for us as you say, it did not end abortion in America, right? It overturned Roe, but it did not end abortion. What it has done is given us the opportunity to win the fight for life. But what we need to do is persevere, right? Persevere in the fight for life. Dobbs clearly was a victory, but the battle for life is not over. And what that means for us is we need to be more involved than ever in the March for Life in Washington, D.C., and our local state marches. But the March for Life in D.C. is really, really important because there is legislation in Congress which is attempting to codify Roe versus Wade. So, so yes, Dobbs overturned Roe, but there is now legislation in Congress attempting to codify, make Roe the law of the land through legislation. And we need to go to Washington and we need to march with the March for Life this January to make our voice heard to policymakers and to everyone in Washington, DC. It seems to me that there's two things we want to avoid, if I'm hearing you right. One is the sense that we've won and it's over. That's no way the case. Also, to not be intimidated. I mean, things have heated up after Dobbs. And we've seen genuine acts of vandalism and real threats come out at the moment. And far from shying back, it seems like we really need to be, gosh, more assertive than ever. I think you're right. I think we do need to be assertive. We do need to be diligent on this. It goes back to what we were talking about, discipline, discipline in life, discipline in the Christian life. We need to understand that we have been given a mission as Catholics, as Christians, and part of that mission is to fight for life. I mean, if not us, who? And we can't be intimidated by these tactics. We need to stand up peacefully, march, and we need to make our voice heard. And there's a lot of us. There's a lot of pro-lifers and people who are committed to life and now is not the time to step back or to be intimidated. Now is the time to really be heard. And so I would urge all our brother knights and their families to this January, go to the March for Life in Washington, DC. That's uh, a cause that has been really close to the heart of the knights for so long. We were instrumental in the, starting the march, you know, nearly 50 years ago. And also, be active in our state marches. Uh, state marches around the country are very important. So again, Jonathan, I would say we need to persevere and to run the race in the fight for life. Supreme Knight, always a delight to speak with you. Thank you for your encouraging words, and we'll talk to you next time on Nightcast. Thank you. Okay, Jonathan, thank you very much. Thank you again to Mr. Kelly for joining us on Nightcast.
Uh, there will be an encore presentation of Mother Teresa, No Greater Love, in U.S. theaters on November 2nd. Further, the film will debut in Canada and the United Kingdom on November 2nd and 3rd. A Spanish dubbed version will also play in the U.S. theaters on November 7th. And additionally, it will even be released in Brazil. So, to buy tickets, visit MotherTeresaMovie.com. <laughs> <laughs>